All right, you are live, baby. Cobra one nine and a half for Bravo. Ten minutes early. This is the early show. <laughs> we are uh, out here in Texas, and it's cold again. It just follows us around, but we have no snow. But it's not cold compared to home. Yeah. <laughs> so we're doing the clinic. This is the last day. We're doing a little back and backing exercise here. So watch us, and we're going to go through about ten dogs in about ten minutes. This is the last day of our puppy start, and then we're going to do a finish. And then we're going to do a broke dog. So we're doing the full 10-day series here in Texas as well. First up, we have Conrad and Otto. Conrad and Otto. Otto is one of Brian Reynolds' breeding dogs. Hi, Josie. Okay, so what we're looking for here is this is their first, you can go with them. This is their very first um, association with seeing a dog on point. We are using the silhouette. This is a puppy and where the minute he looks, the minute he looks at that silhouette, we're gonna pop a bird. Okay, these puppies are not broke, they're just puppy puppies. So John's gonna keep them on the check cord. He'll slow them down a little and wait for him to look. He hasn't seen it. There we go. The pigeon bag just uh, got his attention there. He smelled it. So we, we've moved them. Now, notice Sean doesn't go closer and get right on top of this dog. He's going to wait for the dog to look and see it. He's never done this before. There it is. I just popped the bird. <laughs> and the bird flew into the tree right above the dog. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Good job. So don't worry if your dog doesn't come around the corner and slam into a back. See the backing dummy over there? Um, some of them don't. And they may or may not have the natural instinct to back. But what we are going to do is just hold them. We're not going to go any closer. You'll notice John was about 30 yards away from this silhouette. And he is going to just hold the dog there until the dog actually looks at the silhouette. And then at that point, he's going to go ahead and pop the bird. Okay. So our dog number two is Tom Kaler. Tom Kaler with Mousy. Hey, Miss Shannon, do you think if you could tell them just to be a little closer than the rest of the dogs? Yeah, they can all get their dogs and get in line. It'll go faster. There we go. All right. So uh, Mousy is a litter mate to the first dog that just went. Uh, that was Otto. This is Mousy and Tom Kaler. Very, very nice pup. She has, uh, all these puppies have been shot over. We're shooting birds for them now. We've done launcher work. They're all here trained now. They've gone on long walks and know how to turn on their name. And we're at day three and a half here. Okay, we're gonna wait for her to look over there at that backing silhouette. There it is. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, that was very nice. She'll have a natural back. That was beautiful. Very nice. Now, of course, these puppies aren't broke, so they're going to chase the pigeon when it comes out of the launcher, which is totally fine. That's what's supposed to happen. Very nice. Yes, Elsa. Hi, sis. How are you? Um, yes, it should be 100% visual. Um, it's really important to remember that. We don't want the dog to smell the bird. We want them just to see the other dog on point and then a bird pops and there's a bird loader, Vanessa, and then a bird pops and the dog associates, oh, when there's a dog on point, there's another bird and I have to be careful. Okay. All right. All right. Um, yeah, those of you trying to reach us, it's the best time to call John is early in the morning between 5.30 and 6.30 Central Standard Time. We will be home on February 6th when we're done with this clinic, and you can try calling him then at that point. All right, we're waiting on another dog here. We'll just take them as they come. We did have them in numbered order, but um, I think they thought this would take a little longer, so they were waiting. <laughs> Kyle can go ahead and go, honey. Dog, any dog. You're you're on live. 
Hi, I'm alive. <laughs> You're seeing the real thing right now. <laughs> well, bird season's dwindling down most over the country, and uh, everybody's uh, looking at going to some trials and training in the spring, and uh, hopefully that your hunting season was good and you found lots of wild birds. And we can't wait to get home. To, our hunting season's over, but we'll get to go home and work on wild birds. Work on wild birds and do our yep. winter camp, have a lot of young dogs coming in, a lot of exciting things going to happen. Hopefully the snow and ice is gone before we get there. I hope so. Uh, you can find all of our phone numbers on our website, www.perfectionkennel.com. And uh, we have all of our numbers posted on there. And every description of every service we offer is also um, there, as well as our video sales, if you're looking for a video. This is Kyle and Tib. Oh, <laughs> and Tib, a very fine young GSP here. And we're going to wait for him to look. It's going to be, he hasn't seen it. Let me get behind him a little. He still hasn't seen it. He passed. Okay. There it is. Beautiful. Very nice. Yeah, he's going to back nice. Natural backer. Yep. Uh, uh, Brad, yes, we do need a marshal here. We, we were doing pretty good. We had a marshal, but he's out running puppies right now. So. <laughs> the contestants are dwindling on it. I know it. They're getting tired. <laughs> this is the last day of the clinic, and they're exhausted. So. So uh, here comes Doc. He's our token Brittany at this clinic. It's a fine young pup. See how he does with this. You'll see a lot of representation from the Gray Lives Matter this week um, because it is a Weimaraner clinic that puts this on, <laughs> Weimaraner club that puts this on. So we have lots of uh, beautiful Wimes here this week. This is Doc and Jack. And the token Brittany. That's what I said. He's the token. Okay, so again, John's not going to get close. He's just going to hold him and wait for him to look up and see. There it is. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Good. Okay. Very good. I'm going to try and come back over here and uh, see if we can't get a straight shot of the dog and the silhouette while we do this. Okay. Go gray dogs. All right, Randy. Gray lives matter. <laughs> Kay's inside cooking. She said she'd normally be out here uh, marshalling, but she's inside cooking a fabulous chili lunch. So um, this little dog that's up next is to your right, babe. We have a GSP and this is Mark. Hi, sweet girl. Bird planter is done. So I'm gonna try and stay at this angle. Maybe you can see a little better. Try not to distract the dogs. She's thinking, oh, there it is. Beautiful. Very nice. She started to slow down there and then she saw the bird and went with it. Um, but again, these puppies are not broke at all. So oh, look there, good, good. Now, ideally, everybody, we would have two or three pigeons behind this dog in a launcher, and we have enough launchers to do that. But unfortunately, we don't have enough um, pigeons to do that. Our pigeon crew down here got sick, and they lost quite a bit of their coop. Um, so that's we're just using one bird per puppy to go ahead and introduce the backing. But this is how we would do it. And what we would do if we had more pigeons is we would hold the dog right there. It would look, we'd pop the bird, and instead of letting them chase, we, they would go on the check cord a little bit, you know, maybe six feet out. And then the minute they looked back at the dog a second time, we would pop a bird again. And then um, the minute they looked back a third time, we would pop another bird. So there you go. Thanks, Elsa. Yeah, we've been in clinic series for almost, no come on over with her, Chris. This is Chris and River. River's a lovely young dog, Brian Reynolds breeding. Um, this little pup has a lot of point in her. Yeah. There you go. So we're going to watch her and you you just look and see when you think she sees that silhouette. Okay. Yeah. She's thinking about point and this pup has a lot of point in her. She's lovely. She hasn't seen it. She hasn't seen it. Now John's just going to sit there and wait until she looks up. There it is. Beautiful. That's right. Perfect timing. They all want to go in because a bird came up from there. That's normal. Um, but we don't, uh, we don't let them go in and check out that silhouette. 
We would have loved to have had a couple more birds in those launchers to help. Nice. She'll have a natural back too. This, has been, this little this little girl has a lot of point in her, which has been fun for them. That's their first bird dog, so she's going to be very, very nice. Okay, we have Johnny. Johnny and Sully. Okay. And do this. I hope this angle is working good for you guys. Um, but yeah, we've been in a clinic series for, we were two and a half weeks in Florida, and then we only had a couple days at home. We had to turn around and leave again. So, um, right, and we had no reception whatsoever there, none. Here we have a little bit, but um, not in our, there it goes, beautiful. Very nice. <laughs> he goes, huh, what just happened there? Good boy, Sully. Hi, baby. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, even in our, that's where we're staying is that nice little, uh, Barnuminium, but it doesn't have reception inside either. So uh, after hours, we've not been getting any emails or calls. So just hang with us. Um, once we get through these clinic series, we'll be able to get back to people and start getting y'all booked. This is Lincoln and Brian. Lincoln is the dog. Okay, we've got our bird planted. Okay. Lincoln's been a bit of a puller, and when you have a dog that pulls you into these situations, they're not going to, um, uh, they're not going to back well, they're not going to point well, so you have to, but he is starting to look for birds, that's better, good boy, okay, he didn't see it, he just swung his head around, okay, I mean, there it is, okay, okay, the launcher did not go off, so John just takes him out of that situation, these things happen, and, um, and then Vanessa's going to go check and see why. We'll try and get her fixed, and we'll do that again. Hold on, he's going to get another turn. Um, Scott Fuller, is 10 months old too old to start backing? Oh, heck no. You can start backing your dog anytime. Uh, you can start them as puppies. You can start them when they're two. You can start them when they're three. Um, the idea... Oh, <laughs> Gallagher factor there on the birds. <laughs> I lost that one. <laughs> um you can start them any age. The neat thing about dogs with backing, if they have any natural instinct at all, once you put them on wild birds and the birds start getting up in front of the pointing dog, they're going to start backing on their own. Um, our Maisie pup at six months old backed. She backed the other night and stayed there for five minutes. It was pretty incredible to watch. So um, your puppies will do this on their own if you get them on enough wild birds. But this is a great way to introduce it because you can control the situation. You can hold the pup. The minute they look at the silhouette, you can pop a pigeon and ideally have two or three pigeons in front of that and then pop, again, pop one again when they look back. So it's a direct association with a dog being on point and having birds pop up. Because remember, the reason dogs point is the intensity of not wanting to bump a bird. They don't get too close because a bird will fly away. And backing is the same uh, intensity, intense thought process for the dog that if I move, the bird's going to get up. Here we go. Okay, John's waiting. For some reason, our launcher's being difficult. So she, there you go. She's just going to roll it over. <laughs> we have number two over there if we need it. Okay, you got him? I almost got taken out by the dog. They're going to just check the launcher real quick. It's clicking, but it's not coming off. This happens a lot with the launchers. There's a couple of things on these, um, this particular type of launcher. It has a, a hinge bar that goes over it. And sometimes that hinge bar can be pushed too far to one side. So you just kind of need to set it more in the middle. Um, and sometimes that'll just take care of it. So, um, Scott, yeah, so eight months old, 165. That's fantastic, Scott. I'm, ooh, I'm so jealous. Um, yeah, so you can start introducing backing at any point now. And if you have a dog that, if you don't have a silhouette and you want to use a real dog, if you have a reliable dog that'll stand there, you can do it with pigeons and launchers and do the exact same thing. Um, and, and again, if, if you don't have pigeons, you can use a quail. The biggest thing with a puppy is that you want them to have that association that a bird gets up every time they see a dog on point. So the reason we like to use the launcher is because we can immediately, the minute the puppy looks at the backing dog, we can immediately pop that bird. And by doing that, it's an instant, oh, there's birds there. Um, if you wait and have to walk in front of the dog and then flush it and the puppy's standing there, they don't get that same feeling of intensity of, oh, if I move, the bird's going to get up. And that's why we like to start the puppies backing on launchers. 
<laughs> hey Carly, glad you're taking care of the house. That's wonderful. I I'm hope everything's good back home. Hey Vanessa, they said just lie down prone and flip it every time. <laughs> That's my sister. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Flip it in. What was wrong with it, babe? I had to find out which was the right button to push on Vanessa. Uh-oh. <laughs> Vanessa's got lots of buttons that need pushing. <laughs> we can handle it. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Making sure I'm not missing any questions here. Yeah, the snow is tough. Okay, this is Ashley and Moxie. Moxie's a little GSP and she's coming out here with birds on the brain. That's good. Okay, gonna wait for her to look. There it is. Oh, that was nice. She looked up and went, oh, hey. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Okay. So we, we did the Gallagher factor on the pigeons and threw two extra because that's all we had, literally. We packed every one of them in there. So we're down to three, so we can't lose any. <laughs> Let's see who we've got up next here. This is going to be Maverick, Maverick and Garrett. We've had a great clinic down here. Lots of good stuff going on. And thanks everybody for tuning in. It's really good to be back. Uh, we had a little hiatus with the Florida clinic with no service. So um, well, thanks for tuning in and please share the video after you're done watching it. The more people that share it, the more the word gets out there. And we'll keep doing them. I'm going to do some more pop-up lives throughout this clinic series. And then we'll do the formal Tuesday, Thursday at noon. And uh, we'll keep going. Here we go. Oh, look at him pointing. Okay, so we did launchers out here earlier. That's pretty cool. Very nice. Okay. Got a lot of point in him, doesn't he? <laughs> That's very nice. A little bit of launcher work and the dogs start thinking about pointing everything. That's fantastic. <laughs> I think he's going to have natural back in him, guys. <laughs> he got, he pointed, the, he backed the stick, didn't he? That's awesome. We'll be happy to do a clinic in Iowa. Anybody, all we require is that you have plenty of patients. There it goes. Yep, that was a nice natural back. That was beautiful. And of course, these puppies, again, are all going to take off when that bird flies. That's what they should be doing. So, um, yeah, the only requirement we have to have a clinic is a place to be able to run our dogs in the afternoon. You know, enough area to just run them around a little and uh, plenty of pigeons and then access to ordering quail. But we can even bring our own quail. So, mm -hmm. that was our last puppy. Oh, he gets two turns. Yay! Pays to be last. Um, oh yeah, okay, so Susan, the other day we talked about introducing frozen quail to six week old pups when they're still with their litter. The reasoning is to help prevent feather aversion. Does it matter if it is fresh killed or frozen bird? Yes, absolutely does matter. And take the puppy out of the litter, put them on a piece of string or a check cord and introduce them only with frozen birds because they can, they'll be too inclined to chew on a fresh bird because of course that tastes like meat to them. So we only do frozen, there you go. Look at that guys, look at that. How's that for a natural back? Nice job, Maverick. Good boy. Very cool. Okay. He's going to do him one more time because there's one more bird. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Susan. Um, we like to have those puppy, and they're going to try and run off and eat anything you give them, even a frozen quail. But if you have them on a string, you just pull them to you and you pet, 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 pet. A little trick with tiny puppies is if you can keep them walking with you, keep their feet moving, they're not going to stop and chew on the bird. Okay. So just a little bit of uh, bird introduction. And it's something that we did with our own puppy, our own personal puppy. So two or three times a week, if that helps. Okay. How many launcher repetitions does it take before they will stand through the flush and watch the bird fly off? Oh gosh, George, um, that's so, uh, varies so greatly between dog to dog to dog. Let's see what he does this time. And then I'll talk more about that. Um, 
so on the launch or repetition there we go okay there it is looking right at it he's trying to smell the bird he's not understanding why the bird is not uh, why he can't smell the bird so john's waiting for him to take a real good clear look at that dog there it is beautiful very nice <laughs> so he stood there he hasn't quite put two and two why that happened um but he stood there so that's very cool um so re repetitions on launchers so we had several dogs here we only did um four birds and launchers because that's all the birds we had at this clinic and we had dogs that were slamming onto point and we could walk in and flush after two or three birds uh, we had other dogs that tried to go in and take out every every single time they tried to go in and catch the bird and we'd pop it um, i can tell you that one of the national championships a young female visa that just won the nationals it took her 32 birds to point an actual bird and then to stand and let us walk in and flush it. Um, there's other dogs that the first bird you put them on, they stand nicely and you can walk in because they have a ton of point. It doesn't have any bearing on how they're gonna end up being, but in the beginning, the dogs can really have a lot of variation as to whether they're gonna point that launcher at first or not. What you're trying to recreate is the feeling that if they get too close to the bird, the bird is gonna pop. And that's what gives you intensity of point. I hope that helps answer your question, George. All right, guys, we are going to um, wrap it up here and we're going to go have lunch. We're starving. God bless. Have a nice day. Code 19 Alpha Bravo and it's lunchtime. Right, we'll see you for pop-ups this weekend. Thank you.